If you're into smartphones like I am, you know Qualcomm's always dropping these bombshells that make your current phone feel a bit outdated, right? Today, we're talking about the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5, aka 8 Elite 2. Yeah, that wild name Qualcomm's throwing out there. I mean, come on, why not just call it Gen 2? It's got me scratching my head, but let's break it all down super simple, like we're just chatting over coffee. I'll keep it real, no fancy jargon, just the good stuff you need to know before this beast hits phones next year. Trust me, by the end, you'll be hyped, or maybe a little confused like me, but that's the fun part. Okay, first off, picture this. The Snapdragon 8 Elite from last year was already a monster, right? It powered flagships like the Galaxy S25 series and made gaming and AI feel next level. But Qualcomm's like, nah, we can do better, and they're cranking out this Gen 5 version. Why the weird name? Honestly, it's Qualcomm trying to clean up their mess or make a bigger one depending on how you look at it. See, they want to line up their chips neatly for 2026. So you've got this top dog Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 for the absolute premium phones, then a slightly toned down Snapdragon 8 Gen 5 for stuff that's still awesome but won't break the bank as much. And who knows, maybe a Snapdragon 8S Gen 5 pops up next year for even more options. It's like they're building a family of chips, but the naming, it's got me going, wait, what? Feels like just skipping numbers to match up with older stuff, but hey, if it means better phones, I'm all in. Kind of frustrating though. I just want it simple so we all know what's beast mode. Now, let's get to the juicy bits. How's this thing built? No huge revolution here, folks. It's still on TSMC's three nanometer tech, but an upgraded version called N3P. Think of it like a slightly better recipe for the same cake. It squeezes out maybe 5% more speed without guzzling extra power, or saves you five to 10% on battery if speeds stay the same. Not mind blowing, but every little bit helps your phone last longer during those marathon Netflix binges or whatever. The real magic, Qualcomm sticking with their homemade Orion CPU cores. Yeah, those in-house babies they started using last year. It's a two plus six setup, two super fast prime cores that hit 4.61 gigahertz normally. Whoa, that's speedy. And six solid performance cores at 3.63 gigahertz. For comparison, the old Elite topped at 4.32 gigahertz on primes and 3.53 on the others. Small bumps, but they add up. Imagine your apps opening quicker, scrolling smoother without the phone turning into a toaster. Oh, and Samsung? Those sneaky folks might snag an exclusive version for their Galaxy S26 Edge or whatever they're cooking up. Leaks say that one's even faster at 4.74 gigahertz on the primes. Exclusive club, right? Makes me jealous if you're not Team Samsung. But don't worry, the regular Gen 5 will still crush it for most of us. All right, GPU time. This is where gamers like me get excited. The Adreno 840 is stepping up from the 830, clocking at 1.20 gigahertz instead of 1.10 gigahertz. That's like giving your graphics card a caffeine boost. Rumors say gaming performance jumps big time with less power draw too. Cache gets beefier too, from 24 megabytes total, 12 megabytes L2, L3 on the old one to a whopping 32 megabytes, 16 megabytes L2, L3. More cache means faster data grabs, so games load quicker and run cooler. And the NPU? Oh boy, that's the AI brain. It might hit 100 TOPS, that's trillions of operations per second for smart stuff like photo edits or voice tricks. For context, the laptop Snapdragon X Elite only does 45 TOPS, so this phone chip blowing it away? Insane. If true, your phone could handle crazy AI tasks without slowing down or draining battery like a vampire. Now, performance predictions. This is the part that has me pumped but holding my breath. Remember that Galaxy S26 Edge leak? Even when they downclock the primes to 4 GHz, probably to keep it from overheating in that slim body, it still matched or beat the old Elite in single and multi-core Geekbench tests. At full throttle, we're talking wild gains. One rumor says Antutu scores over 4 million points, that's way ahead of the fastest Elite phones right now which top out around 2.7 million. Gaming? Better frames, less heat, longer playtime. But here's the catch. Some tipsters say power use is similar to the old ones, so it shines in some apps but might not in others. Depends on the test, you know. Overall, with the newer 3 nanometer process and upgraded Orion cores, this thing should smoke the competition. Apple, MediaTek, you name it. But we'll wait for real tests. Leaks are cool, but hands-on is king. Who guys wrapping this up. The Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 feels like Qualcomm saying, we're not messing around anymore. From the confusing name to those heart-pounding specs, it's got me daydreaming about next year's flagships. Battery life might get a nice nudge, gaming will feel epic, and AI, whoa, your phone could be your personal wizard. But yeah, that naming scheme still got me side-eyeing Qualcomm. Why make it harder for us fans? Anyway, if this lands like the leaks say, Android phones are about to level up big time. What do you think? 
Hyped for a Galaxy S26 or OnePlus with this? Drop your thoughts below, smash that like if you're excited, and subscribe for more breakdowns. Catch you next time. Stay techie.